Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am going over my wish list for 2022. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely keep on watching. And if you guys are new, can you guys please hit the subscribe button and continue watching this video all the way through. That really helps me out. But that's enough rambling. I have a list of how many? 18? 17 plants. So I'm trying, gonna try to run through them real quick. And if you guys are new, I am doing a no buy all of this year. So the whole year of 2022, inspired by Caitlin from Plant Life in the Tropics. If you guys haven't seen her channel, which I am sure you have, definitely go and check out her channel. She has awesome plants. So I was really inspired by her to try to do it for 2022 myself. So all of these plants I have on my wish list, I'm hoping to trade for. Um, some of them might be a little bit of a stretch for the plants that I have to trade, um, unless I did like a bundle or something for one plant. Some of them are a little bit, I think, a little bit far out there, like I said, for the plants I have to trade for. I'm gonna have, maybe I should turn it a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna have pictures right here of the plants that I'm talking about. So my first plant on my list, also I should say, none of these are in particular order. They're just in the order that I put pictures in my, um, in my photo album or whatever on my phone. Oh, I think there's one more that I forgot. So the first plant on my list is a philodendron squammy call. It is very similar to the philodendron serpents, which I have in my collection currently. Um, the philodendron serpents is kind of a harder plant. It really likes its humidity and does not like to dry out, but for the most part, I can keep it happy. And I just really like the squammy call and how the leaves are almost a little bit more longer, like they're more skinnier and more longer. And obviously they again have the very fuzzy petioles, which I enjoy a weird looking petiole. I don't know what it is. It just makes the plant... 10 times better for me if it has more than just some cool leaves, you know what I'm saying? So that's the first plant on my list. I've basically wanted it since I knew what the Serpens was and I've known what the Serpens was for a very long time. And um, I was that one was just more easily accessible at the time when I was looking for plants. When I hit my 100 subscribers here on YouTube, the Serpens was like my gift to myself basically for hitting 100 subscribers. So hopefully I can find somebody to trade with that one. That one I think is also, like I said, a little bit out of maybe my trading range. I'm not really sure what any of these plants are currently on the market, um, but hopefully I can find somebody to trade with. My next plant on my list is more of a common one. It is a variegated string of hearts. I have had this plant before in the past and have killed it every time. Um, I don't know why I have, but honestly, from my memory, none of them, I got all of them in the post. And um, so I think that was just a little bit too much stress for them maybe. And I don't know. So I would really love to try it again. I really love the regular string of hearts and I can grow that plant very well. So I just, I love this, the variegated form of anything. It just is, just makes it more fun. So I would really like to add that plant as to my collection this year as well. The third plant on my list is an Epipremnum panatum Cebu Blue. I am a huge fan of this plant, especially in its mature form. It gets amazing fenestrations and it climbs like a beast and I... I'm just a really big fan. Again, I have had this plant in my collection before. I have only got it through the post and they've just not done well for me once they've arrived. So I'm not really sure if it's me or if it's the post and the stress from that or what, but I'm hoping to get some cuttings or something that I can just have in water or LECA. I seem to do a lot better with my plants if they're living in hydro or semi-hydro. Um, they're just, I'm just less likely to kill them in my experience. So I grow a lot of my plants in water or, uh, semi-hydro. So 
I would love to get a cutting of that or a couple cuttings or whatever I can find. That is also one of my plants that I'm allowing myself to purchase if I see in person because those are just the rules. I've allowed myself to be able to purchase a Ciba Blue if I find it at a big box store or anything like that and any sport variegated Monstera because I know that I'll regret my whole entire existence if I don't pick those up if I find them. <laughs> Fourth plant on my list is a philodendron varicosum. Again, I have had this plant in my collection before in the past, but I think it was one of those plants that I got, you know, at the beginning of my plant, house plant journey anyways, and I didn't really understand what humidity was. And um, that's definitely one of the plants that will die if you don't give it proper care, just as humidity and stuff like that. So now I have a grow tent and um, I've been able to keep some more finicky plants alive. So I thought it would be really nice to have one of those in my collection again and try to grow it because they're just, obviously you're looking at the photos. It, they're just gorgeous plants. They are. They're just gorgeous and they have amazing petioles again with the fuzzy petioles and just a big, big fan of the varicosum and I have some hybrids. I think the Splendid, is the Splendid a hybrid with the varicosum? I think the Majestic is too and I've been able to do okay with those but they do kind of say that the hybrids do better than the original parents of the plant so who knows but I would like to add that to my collection again this year if anybody wants to trade hit me up. The fifth plant on my list is a philodendron Parisio verde. I love this plant because of the variegation and it's just it's just beautiful and honestly I kind of like that the way that it grows and that it's more uh out of control wild growing like um I kind of like that where the plant is hard to tame I guess is what I'm trying to say like from what I've seen and heard from other pe plant people is that they're very uh aggressive growers I guess you could say their aerial roots go mad and they just get really big really fast and I and I like plants that are obviously easy to grow because you know they make you feel like you're doing something right even if they're super low maintenance plants and they'll grow with or without you basically but I just really like the leaf shape and I really love the variegation and the fact that they don't revert is also something that could be helpful. Maybe I could get like a lower variegation cutting and then uh, put it in my grow tent or something and give it the light that it needs to get the variegation back. My sixth plant is one that still might be a little bit hard to get, especially in a trade. It is the philodendron, no, it's not a philodendron. It is the Monstera dubia Peru form. So this plant kind of has had a little bit of a roller coaster of a journey in the plant community. It, you know, came out a couple years back kind of towards the mainstream and everybody was talking about it and everybody wanted it and it was going for thousands of dollars but now it has been propagated because it shoots out runners typically to uh, propagate itself in the wild so it also shoots out runners in uh, your homes and stuff and so people get the runners and root them and you know so maybe if I could get my hands on a couple runners that's kind of what my expectation is for this plant because they're still kind of uh, hard to find. I'm hoping that I can get my hands on at least a couple runners and, you know, try to root them myself and grow them myself and kind of go from there. Because it is such a, it's such a beautiful plant. I mean, everybody loves it. Even people that don't love Monstera are like, okay, that's... That's pretty neat with the way the holes are and the fenestrations are. It's just, there's more holes than leaf, which is just incredible. The next plant on my list is a Hoya. This is the first Hoya on the list. Um, it is a Hoya imbricata. So this plant I've wanted for a long time. As well, obviously all of these plants I've wanted for a long time. I really love this Hoya and the way you can kind of get it to like suction cup to things. 
There's one that I've seen where it's like literally suction cup to a terracotta pot and it's so freaking cool. I just, I love that they're perfect and round when they get stuck on things and they're really even still cute when you have them trailing or something they look like kind of taco-y and stuff like that. So I just really like this plant and the fact I love Hoyas too. I'm, I'm into anything basically plant related. So yeah. It's just a super fun plant and I really love the way that it grows and the splashy leaves and it's just, it's just a cool plant. Number eight is a philodendron sodoroy. A real philodendron sodoroy. So earlier this year I was kind of, um, what's the word? So earlier this year I purchased a philodendron Sodoroy AFF or Affinis or whatever that stands for. I'm not really sure at the moment. Um, but it's basically a philodendron Sodoroy that's not a philodendron Sodoroy, which I don't fully understand what that means, but I'm not a know it all or anything like that, and I don't claim to be. So, this is just kind of information I've picked up. So basically, I bought it as a philodendron sodoroy AFF, thinking it was a philodendron sodoroy. They are not the same plant. One is a crawling plant, one is a climbing plant, one has completely different petioles than the other, uh, one has a pink sinus. They're completely different plants. I was unaware. Even in my unboxing video, if I can find it, I'll link it down below where I unbox this plant that I got. Um... I was kind of confused because I looked at it and I'm like, I like the, in the video I said, I like the immature version better because I thought that this plant was just, the plant I got in the mail was just so mature and uh, did not look anything like the, what I had in my mind of a philodendron sodoroy and that's because it is not a philodendron sodoroy. And so long story long, I want a philodendron sodoroy because they're freaking amazing. And they're silver and they're super cute and I love them. Anthurium luxuriens, which is just the best thing since sliced bread to me. It's, I've almost got my hands on it once before, but I really wanted to trade or trade to lower the price. And the person that was, had it for sale didn't, wasn't interested in that. And so I, you know, I had to let it go. And um, because this plant does kind of go for a pretty penny, and um which I understand why it is a beautiful plant the corrugated leaves are it for me right now the the anthuriums with corrugated leaves even some of the philodendron and monstera and stuff with corrugated leaves or bumpy leaves or pillowy leaves whatever you want to call it are just hitting a spot for me that I didn't even know was there and um yeah so I really want this plant because it's freaking amazing the next plant on my list has a similar name. It is a philodendron luxuriance, which is also the best thing since sliced bread to me because it is big and beautiful and it has heart-shaped leaves and it has the glowing neon veins, which is just, I mean, they're basic, it's basically like a neon sign, but it's a plant because of the veins and stuff it has. It's just... It's just beautiful and I've always wanted it in my collection and I did see one this summer for like $160 and I almost got it but I didn't um, because it was it was still in Iowa but they didn't want to ship and it was still it was quite a ways so I didn't pick it up but if I can find it in a trade I'll be driving to pick up that baby that's for sure. For sure. The next plant on my list is plant number 11. I stopped counting, but we're on plant number 11, which is a lot. This is a philodendron domesticum variegata, which I might already have a trade set up for, fingers crossed. Somebody posted one on um, like a Iowa plant swap group or whatever last night, and I hope to get one, maybe. Um but they're just beautiful. They're very similar to the philodendron Jose Buono, which I have. So I haven't wanted to like take the plunge to purchase one because they're very similar to that plant, which I already own, but the variegation is more yellow 
And I'm really into that right now with the rest of the plant world. Everybody's into yellow variegation again. So yeah, but they're just beautiful. I love the shape of the leaves. I mean, like I said, they're very similar to the Jose Bueno, which I love. So obviously I'm going to love this one because it has yellow variegation and I love yellow variegation. So that's basically all I have to say about that one. The next one is another Hoya. Hoya Bertoniae, which is another kind of common plant. You can find it a lot of times in your big box store if you're lucky. I haven't been that lucky. So I haven't been able to pick one up. I did get a few cuttings a while back um, in a trade or something. I can't remember what I who I got them from, but they did not, they did not make it in my care. So I just really like the leaf shape and I just really like the dark edges on the leaves and I just think it's a super cute plant and it has obviously Hoya blooms, which honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with any Hoya blooms. I've heard some of them smell terribly, but I haven't experienced that myself yet. I've only gotten like one Hoya to bloom for me in my like real plant journey. Before, when I was collecting succulents and stuff, I got a Hoya Bella and I got it to bloom and then I killed it. <laughs> because Hoya blooms are thirsty. Or no, well, yes, Hoya blooms are thirsty plants when they're blooming, but Hoya Bellas are extremely thirsty. And I killed it because I thought it was a Hoya and didn't need water for a month. And uh, Hoya Bellas are not, are not like that. So the next plant on my list is my first begonia. If you guys didn't know, I'm into begonias. I'm basically into any any genius. Any genius. Any genus. So, number 13 is a begonia SP or spa Sarawak. It is beautiful. It is, it's just a super magical looking plant. And I really like it. Um, it's almost like a trailing or a climbing uh, begonia, which... I don't really have that many begonias right now because I kind of suck, honestly, about keeping them alive and happy. But I do have a Botanica's terrarium, which doesn't have any plants in there right now because I killed them all and I had all of my euphorbia, or no, not euphorbia, I'm losing my mind. I had all of my alocasias in there and they were doing fine and then I think I missed a watering or something and I basically killed them all and then I overwatered them and yeah. So... I honestly don't think that this is a plant that I can necessarily trade for because I don't think a lot of people are into begonias and terrarium plants. Um, it's more of a smaller, you know, subculture of a subculture of the plant community. So it might be kind of harder to find, um, but that's okay. Also, I don't know if I've mentioned this. This is kind of like super off topic. But I purchased a mystery box from Botanica's, like, in December, okay? So a lot of people are going to be like, you literally just said you're on a no-buy, which I know I'm on a no-buy, but I purchased it before 2022, and I purchased it in 2021, which I was kind of on a no-buy at the end of 2021, but I didn't really, like, say that out loud, so it was okay, <laughs> And, um, so I purchased a thousand dollar mystery box. Obviously I didn't pay a thousand dollars for a mystery box because that's kind of crazy. I got it on sale and so it was only like, it was less than 300, which is still a lot of money for a mystery box, but I wanted to go out with the bang of the year 2021. So I purchased it, but fun fact, they're not going to ship it until like March because I live in Iowa and, uh, it's cold here. And so they have this policy where they don't ship plants unless it's 30 degrees and above in your transit area. So well, hopefully we'll get that in March. <laughs> so there's that kind of thinking because that's really the only place that I've seen Begonia Sarawak um, available online is from Botanica's because Botanica's has everything that's amazing. So we're done rambling about that one. This next plant is another plant that I think might be a little bit far out of my reach for the plants that I have to trade. Um, but this plant is just glorious and I had to include it in this video. So this next plant on my list is a Monstera aurea, which is the yellow variegated Monstera. And it is just glorious. 
I really wouldn't even care if I got the small form or the large form. Anything with yellow variegation is in my wheelhouse of plants that I want. And the fact that it's a Monstera. I love Monsteras. They're, I mean, it's just, I love the fenestrations. If I could only have one house plant, it would be a Monstera. It would be. So, it's just a great plant. That's all I have to say about it. The next one is another begonia and my last begonia on the list and it is the begonia ferox. I hope I'm saying that right. I really don't know. But it's basically a begonia with chocolate chips on it. Which is just amazing. Or like studs. If you guys ever had those stud bracelets or stud belts. I did. And um, that's what it looks like. And I'm a big, I'm a big fan of studs. I don't really rock them anymore, but I will rock them on my Hoya or my uh, begonias if I had the opportunity to. Um, I'm honestly not sure how much this plant goes for, but I think it's another one that's kind of more expensive for the begonia world. I mean, not saying that begonias are like crazy expensive like philodendron or monstera are, but. I'd have to find like a specific person obviously that is into begonias but wants philodendron because <laughs> I basically only have philodendron to trade for so we'll see. So the next plant on my list is a Hoya elliptica which has been on my list again for a very long time. They have them at Ted's which is a garden center in Des Moines area. Des Moines, Iowa area, and I almost picked one up, but I did not the last time I was there, even though I kind of regret not getting it. Um, but they're super cute. They have been around for a while, so I think it might be an easier one to trade for because some a lot of people have them in their collections already, if they're Hoya people. And I just really like the leaf shape and I really like the veins. Any Hoyas with veins or splashy or whatever, I, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm hooked. So I'd really love to add that plant to my collection. The second to last plant, we got two to go. Um, the green Maranta or the green prayer plant. I'm not really sure what the actual name is, but those are the two names that I found online. And I have the red one currently. And I kind of struggled with it a little bit at first because I've never been good with Marantas, um, even though they're kind of the easier genus or easier genre of plants in the plant per plant family. Um, but I've been doing okay with it and I kind of want to branch out and get the green one because I don't know how it is, but some of the green ones that people have, the leaves like almost are black in the middle and then they have like neon like veins they're just they're just gorgeous and they're a trailing plant and they move up and down with light and it's just overall a awesome looking plant and I would really love to attempt to grow it hopefully someday and the last plant number 18 on my list is basically any syngonium <laughs> so I have been getting really into Syngonium, the Syngonium genus anyways, um, not really into it, like I only have like three or four, oh, maybe I have, I have six, okay, so I have like six Syngonium um, in my collection currently, and I just really like them, and I really like the leaf shape, and I really like the way that they grow, and the fact that they can climb, or they can trail, or whatever, so basically any type of Syngonium. I'm I'm really into right now so yeah okay guys well that was my last plant on my 2022 wish list I obviously have other plants in the back of my mind that I would love to own someday, but these are kind of just the more ones that stick out to me when people are like, oh, what plant do you buy? I want to buy? Like, this is the list that I have. So, but if somebody would come up to me and be like, oh, I have this and it's, and I love it. Like, obviously I will trade for that if I can. Um, 
this is just kind of something to go off of for me personally to kind of look back on and maybe next year or at the end of this year we'll do a video a recap video on all of the plants that I was able to check off this list because that might be fun um so yeah if you guys are willing or wanting to maybe possibly set up a trade with me definitely hit me up on Instagram that's kind of the easiest uh way to get a hold of me um my name is Emma's Plant Wonderland here same on YouTube and same on Instagram so if you guys are interested in setting up a trade or if you guys have wanting been wanting anything that I might have or you think I have definitely hit me up on Instagram maybe I should do a video of all of the plants that I have to trade for Maybe somebody, if you guys are interested in seeing the plants that I have that um, I'm propagating currently to prepare for trades in the spring, I can make that video. Definitely leave me a comment down below and I will get right on that because that would be a fun, fun video to kind of look over and show you guys what I all have for trades. So thank you all so much for watching. We will see you in my next one. Bye guys. So we're like halfway done we can do it so the next plant on my list is a not a philodendron I think it's my first anthurium too by the way um it is a philodendron <laughs> it's not a philodendron <laughs> okay it is and also I need to like put a posted stick or posted no over my face so I stop looking at my face and I look at the camera because I look at myself constantly when I should be looking at you guys like this. But like I look at myself because I want to make eye contact with myself. But then I'm not looking at you. So it's hard for me. So hopefully someday I will grow out of that. <laughs> or I just need to cover up my face. So I don't look at it. Anyways. I'm hoping I'm rambling through these but not too fast. Have I said that already? I probably did. Okay.